Hey, what's good, Facebook? What's good, um, YouTube? Uh, this is a live, you guys. So if you guys want to join, just hit me up with a DM and I'll, I'll send you guys the link. Um, I thought do do a live today. Um, I got a um another RIP for you guys. You know, I got my sister Cheryl Oka, um, Cheryl and Vaughn. That's my nephew. Jeez, you guys, they OD'd last night, and um, Vaughn was able to post through, but damn, they lost Cheryl. Um, you guys, fentanyl addiction. You guys, it's getting so fucking bad. You guys don't even have a clue of what addiction is. We get told by the doctors and we get told by the specialists of what we should do and where we should go. Blake Tailfeathers. Blake Tailfeathers knows where I'm coming from. And he was an addict as well, you guys. And um, wait, I took out my sweater before I continue, you guys. Anyways, you guys, um, Blake Tailfeathers should know where we're coming from and who we are. My dad is fighting addiction, you guys. Um, just like everybody else, eh? just like over the counter medication. Nothing like nothing like fucking opioids or anything like that. So this fucking guy goes. This fucking guy tells my dad, "No, you should get on Subox, and it really help. It really help. Look at us, him and his wife." And they're like, "Yeah, look at you. You stay on it. You fucking you need it." Don't be asking people that are not on opioids to go on it, you know. I don't know, you guys. Is um, yeah, opioids do qualify, I think, for codeine and stuff like that. You know, codeine. You know, like like, I don't know, his opioid would be categorized for um, no benzos, no benzos. My dad's fighting the benzos. Yeah, you know, like the um, like restaurant shit like that, you guys. And um, yeah, this guy goes and tells him, "Yeah, you should jump on um, <clears throat> you should jump on the Suboxone program. It will help you." I was thinking, "Wow, that's the kind of advice we give you guys." Check these out. I'm gonna get zooted for you guys. These are sour smashes, you guys. These are like 80 mils, I believe, in one candy, almost a hundred. Yeah, you guys um. Yeah, Blake Telfeathers, you guys, he's going to run for council, I think. He's campaigning. That's what he says. He goes to tell my dad. You should get on some boxing. No way, you guys. Boxing is, some boxing is something that you shouldn't be on, you guys. You might have a stroke. You might die. Who knows what? Look, tired housing, you guys. Let's get it going. I got an issue with those guys. I'll show you this letter here. You guys, a lot of people like Cheryl and um, Vaughn, they're dying in the city. Some say it's because um, the addicts follow the drugs and then they're in the city. That's not even true. I'll tell you why. Vaughn and Rennie, they had nowhere to go. But how is it the reserve has no money, no funding for support programs, help people? My nephew Rennie was just um, 16 or 17. He moved with us. Vaughn was of age already. Their mom had a house in Moses Lake. But she lost it. She was partying there. She was going out with Jay Cody at the time. Her and Jay Cody were at the house. They're an ugly couple. Well, not ugly couple, but it was funny because they used to really drink a lot, eh? Hey? Well, we all used to drink over at Cheryl's house. In part, we all wrecked it for her. <laughs> no, they had their own house. They had their own house, and they ended up um, losing that. They moved to our house. They're at our house for years. Then we moved to Lethbridge, and they migrated with us to Lethbridge. I went to jail, and when I got out, I came back to Cardston. My family followed me, and the rest kind of just stayed in Lethbridge. Wow. 
it's sad because they leave our reserve because what standoff was doing was with its addicts they were dropping them off at the left bridge shelter when they got when they acquired it They acquired it, and then um, started dropping our people off there. A lot of people died in Lethbridge, and now Lethbridge is having problems with the natives. <clears throat> and then us, we're playing that race card. Oh, they're racist. They're racist as fuck. We already know they're racist. Tell us something we don't know. My beef with them is they should use some of that money and put it to organizations, something for the up and comers. Oh, open up the basket gym. Place is only used for a funeral, you guys. The only time it ever uses the gym, they go have a fucking funeral there. You guys remember back in the day when it was kids, we used to go pop that the MLB, the Moses Lake Basketball Association. That was fun, man. Darcy, Jamal, Bradley. There's a whole bunch of them. I never played, but you know, I'm a fan. I like to well, I can fucking throw the I can I can throw the rock, you guys. I can fucking play some ball. I just never played with the boys. Hey? I was more or less just like watching, you know, I was more of a fan than anything. But yeah, um that was fun. And I wonder today why people like Marcel. Marcel used to be um recreation how come they can't do that anymore they still do that today but i think it's just like nepotism hey while well, we're taking our nephew and our three cousins and we're going to the west edmonton mall that's crazy you guys it's crazy and it's not fair our money's all put to use i'm wondering what these campaigners are gonna be campaigning about i was talking to my brother I was talking to my brother, he's on council. I was telling him that the chief is the same age as Weasel Head, the other guy that's going to be running for chief. There's only two. Every time we have chief and council, it's always those two names, Roy Fox or that, uh, whatever that Weasel Head guy's name is. I can't remember his name. It's probably not that important. I can't remember. How come they can't... Um, why do we always have to transfer between those two? Oh, my brother, you know, it's time for change, you guys. You know, we should fucking actually turn this into the actual change, you know? So for the guys that are running, hey, I don't know who, I don't know names. There's no list yet. I don't even think they did nominations yet, or I don't know. There's little information about it, so. Our people don't have to take off the left bridge all the time, especially our addicts. I'm really gonna miss Cheryl. Fuck. Cheryl was so funny, you guys. This one time I had a bunch of fucking stuff in my pocket. The cops stopped us, and then Cheryl used her daughter's name. I think her daughter's born in 92. The cops. The cops went around the car. They're going to search me. I had a bunch of stuff in my pocket, like Oxy-80s and stuff like that. And I didn't, uh, the cops said, if I check your pockets, I'm not going to find nothing, am I? I said, no, I don't have anything. And then by the grace of God, he didn't search me, hey? And then he said, who's your driver? I said, it's uh, Cheryl. And then, or oh, I'm not Cheryl. Oh, she told me to use her other name. What is her other name? I forgot her name. She's got a real funny name because it's a street name. It's a real pretty name she uses. Jen, I think. Call me Jen. I think that's a I think that's what Cheryl says. Her name's Jen. Anyways, um anyways, uh that cop says, What year were you born? And she says, 92. And then 2018, you guys, Cheryl already wasn't doing too good, but she's already on the Beans, I started to hit the street, started shooting up. <clears throat> started doing all that bad stuff, and she ends up. Um, the cops buy it. They're like, all right, get Eric out of here, you guys. 
And we drove around the corner. <laughs> Carol asked me, Eric, do you have um do you have um how many other bean? I guess is it shaking? And she was like, I can't believe they bought it. But I, I don't know, maybe the cops were just too busy that day because Cheryl didn't even look like she was, uh, I think, 28 at the time. I think it's like, cops, are you 28? Hey, and she's like, yeah, I'm 28. They let her drive my vehicle there. Yeah, we went around the corner. We got, or no, she actually drove me down to the house. The south, south side. Sorry about that, you guys. Fuck my fucking... My fucking signal really sucks, you guys. I went from Explornet to this, um, that real fancy one, Starlink. Starlink. And when I got the Starlink, and then when I started figuring out how to stream, I realized I couldn't stream because there's too many fucking glitches, you guys. I kept cutting in and out, okay? So I really apologize to you guys if my lives glitch out, okay? But just stay tapped in, you guys. My stories are usually pretty funny, eh? I was just talking about Cheryl Oka, you guys. They found her body. Or they found her and her son yesterday. And um, uh, unfortunate, she lost her life. Uh, Vaughn was all right, I guess. Yeah, you guys, you got a lot of funny stories, you guys. This one time I got stabbed up by... Um, Nolan Black Rabbit because uh, he was on one. Hey, that's not meth started coming out. It's making our people crazy. He came in with a knife. They eh? tried to roll up on us. They even used it. They cut my hand. It's a little cut right here. Barely see it. Chop my hand. Uh, Vaughn actually jumped from the fourth story. You guys want to know on fourth street, there's high rises on fourth street. He right fucking jet and he started hanging on to the um to the fucking thing. And while that shit went down, he pulled himself back up. I was fucked up, you guys. Yeah, I got a few stories about the boys. That's why I like doing these lives too, you guys. Sometimes when I hear stuff like that, like I just heard that a couple of minutes ago. When my father just told me when he came in, he told me, told me Pepsi said Vaughn, uh, Vaughn and Cheryl, pa um, OD, Cheryl passed away. Cheryl passed away. They revived Vaughn. So yeah, like when I'm doing lives, I hear stuff like that, you know. So and then usually when I hear stuff like that, I usually have a really funny story about them, hey, or something crazy, you know, like. Um, I know, I know, I don't really, I don't promote drug use or anything like that in my stories or drug dealing or I don't, I don't, it's just sometimes the way I tell the story, you know, and the way it happened, you know, we were trafficking that time. So that's why my stories sound like that. Well, you guys, I wanted to rant about housing, but it's an ongoing, um, it's an ongoing, um, issue right now so there's still there's still a little bit of hope for me hey okay? let's put it that way so i won't discuss housing right now yeah we'll discuss it another time you guys we'll discuss housing we'll rant about it usually i get a lot of mac cherry with um a little bit of shatter Wrinkled on top. Oh, well, you guys, I'm out skis. I'll do another live in a bit here. Um, just want to tell you guys my little story about Cheryl, you guys. So, yeah, you guys, to anybody that lost anybody to fentanyl or that bad shit going around, you guys, my heart goes out to you guys. It'll never end, you guys. It'll never end on the reserve. It's always going to be here for as long as we live. That drug going to be here it's not us that brings it in it's not another native that brings it in it's not a, it's not um it's not the black people from toronto that are bringing it in it's not no it's not the asians bringing it in from boat no guys it's just a drug that will always be here it's a drug that if it's not anything if they can't find anything worse it's always going to be here but until they find something that's 10 20 times 
30,000 times stronger than the, it allows me fentanyl, carfentanil, who knows what kind of names to have, you guys. But um, yeah, we'll do another live. I'll talk some more about that kind of shit, you guys. And peace out, till then.